Hello developers. As a UI developer, I've worked through real world challenges, trying to bring motion, depth, and interactivity into web design. And I've seen the same question pop up again and again. Can we really build rich 3D interfaces with just CSS? Today, I'm going to show you that the answer is a big yes. We're going to create something that looks like it belongs on a futuristic product page, a fully interactive 3D box with smooth rotation, responsive layout, and glowing visuals. And we'll do it without a single line of JavaScript. That's right, no frameworks, no scripts. Just clever use of HTML and CSS working together in ways most people don't even realize are possible. So what's the real focus here? We're not just building something that looks cool. We're using this project to truly understand how 3D works in CSS. We'll explore how transform style, preserve 3D and perspective actually affect layout and rendering. How to position cube faces using rotate X, rotate Y and translate Z. How to control each view using only radio inputs and the checked selector. How to trigger animations and changes using CSS selectors alone. How to apply keyframes, radial gradient and glow effects to give that ambient, cyber-like feel. How to pause the auto-rotation when the user interacts, again, without any JavaScript. And how to wrap it all into a clean, modern, glassmorphic UI that works beautifully on both desktop and mobile. Now pause for a second and ask yourself, have you ever truly seen how far CSS can go on its own? Because this project might change how you look at HTML and CSS forever. And before we dive into the build, it takes effort to plan and craft tutorials like this. So if you're finding value already, hit that like button and subscribe. It helps this channel grow and motivates me to keep creating content for you. All right, now let me walk you through how we'll break this down. First, we'll go over the HTML structure. It's simple, but it's the foundation of everything we're about to build. We'll look at how the cube is constructed, how we're using radio buttons for interaction, and how everything is set up semantically to work cleanly with CSS. Once that's in place, we'll dive into the CSS step-by-step -step and explore all the powerful techniques we're using to bring this 3D viewer to life. From transform style, preserve 3D and perspective, to lighting effects, animations, and how CSS selectors control everything without JavaScript, we'll explore it all one concept at a time so it's not just copy-paste. You actually understand how and why it works. So let's start from the very beginning with the HTML. All right, let's start by breaking down the HTML structure. This is the foundation of our entire 3D box. We begin inside the body tag. This is where everything lives, the background glow, the cube, the controls, and the interactive elements. The very first element we add is a div with the class background glow. This isn't functional, it's purely decorative. We'll use CSS to turn this into a glowing animated background. Think of it like ambient lighting behind our 3D scene. Next, we create a container called Viewer. This is the main wrapper for our entire cube experience. Here's where we'll apply the 3D perspective in CSS. You can think of it like a camera. It lets us view the cube in 3D space. Inside the viewer, we add six radio inputs. Each one represents a different side of the cube, front, back, left, right, top, and bottom. Now, these inputs aren't visible, but they're incredibly powerful. Each one has the same name, so only one can be selected at a time. We'll use them with the checked pseudo class to trigger CSS changes based on which view is active. This is how we'll rotate the cube without any JavaScript. After the inputs, we add a control section. This is a, a simple set of labels, but they act like buttons. Each label is connected to one of the inputs using the for attribute. So when a user clicks a label like front view, it checks the corresponding input and the CSS responds. This is how we let users rotate the cube by clicking buttons. Next comes the heart of the layout, the scene. This is the container for the cube itself. We'll apply transform style preserve 3D to this element in CSS, so everything inside it stays in proper 3D space. Inside the scene, we add six faces of the cube. Each one is a div with a class like cube face front or cube face back. These are the physical sides of the cube, the panels you'll actually see rotating. We'll use CSS to position each one using rotate X, rotate Y, and translate Z. Every face contains a heading and a short description, just like a real product view. We also add a data tooltip attribute for potential hover effects, which we'll handle purely with CSS later. 
Finally, we add a section called Dot Indicators. This gives us modern, clickable dot navigation below the cube. Each dot is actually a label, again linked to one of the radio inputs. So when you click a dot, it activates the corresponding view, just like the buttons above. And with that, we've created a complete structure. We now have a glowing background, a perspective wrapper, six invisible inputs to control views, a button panel for interaction, a 3D scene holding all six cube faces, and dot indicators for navigation. It's clean, it's semantic, and it gives us full control using just HTML and CSS. Now that the structure is in place, we're ready to dive into the CSS. And that's where the real magic begins. Let's start with the very top of our CSS. We begin with the universal selector, the asterisk. Here, we're resetting the margin and padding to zero, and setting box sizing to border box to ensure all elements size consistently across the layout. Next, we define our root level custom properties. We create three CSS variables, primary color, accent color, and BG color. These variables allow us to use consistent colors throughout the project and update them in one place if we want to change the entire theme. Now let's talk about the body. We're setting its height to fill the full viewport and using Flexbox to perfectly center everything both vertically and horizontally. The background is set using our custom variable, BG color, this gives the page a rich, dark background, like a deep navy or charcoal tone, perfect for making the neon effects pop. The text color is set to white, and we also make sure the body is overflow, hidden so that no scroll bars appear while the cube is animating. Finally, we give the body a position, relative, which allows us to absolutely position other elements, like the glowing background, relative to it. This section sets the stage for everything that follows, a clean foundation with strong color contrast and centered layout ready for 3D magic. Now let's talk about the background glow. This element creates the ambient lighting behind our 3D viewer. We position it absolutely and stretch it to cover the entire screen using inset zero. By setting the Z index to zero and turning off pointer events, we make sure it sits in the background and doesn't interfere with any interaction. The magic begins with the background itself. We're layering multiple radial gradients each one placed at different positions with soft transparency. The first gradient creates a soft white glow that follows a dynamic position, controlled by custom variables we'll animate shortly. The next two gradients use a bright electric purple, placed at opposite corners to give the scene a subtle cyberpunk glow. These layers together create a soft glowing nebula effect behind the cube. Then comes the animation. We apply two keyframe animations, pulse glow and move light. The pulse glow animation gently fades the background in and out, creating a breathing, ambient rhythm every 30 seconds. Meanwhile, the move light animation changes the position of our custom variables, causing the main glow to slowly drift across the background in a looping motion. And finally, we blur the entire layer using a heavy blur filter. This softens the gradients and makes the glow feel like light diffused through glass. This section brings the background to life adding movement, depth, and atmosphere without any extra elements. It's subtle, but it plays a huge role in making the interface feel polished and modern. Let's take a closer look at the two animations we applied to the background, Pulse Glow and Move Light. First, we have Pulse Glow. This animation controls the opacity of the background glow. It starts at a lower opacity, rises to full brightness at the halfway point, and then fades back down again. This creates a soft, ambient breathing effect, like the background is gently pulsing with energy. It loops infinitely so the light feels alive and constantly moving, without distracting the user. Now let's look at Move Light. This one is really clever. Instead of animating a property directly, we're animating two custom CSS variables, X and Y. These variables are used to control the position of the main radial gradient in the background. At the start, the glow begins at the left side of the screen. By the halfway point, it moves toward the bottom center. And by the end of the animation, it drifts to the top right. This creates a soft drifting movement across the background, almost like a light source slowly floating through space. By combining these two keyframes, the pulsing glow and the shifting position, we give the background a subtle futuristic sense of motion without ever needing JavaScript. Now let's talk about the viewer container. This is the main wrapper that holds the entire interactive cube. We set its position to relative so that we can position elements like the dot indicators or background layers relative to it. The most important part here is the perspective. 
By applying perspective 1600 pixels, we give the scene a sense of 3D depth, almost like a camera is looking into the container. The higher the value, the flatter the 3D space will look. In our case, 1600 gives us a realistic but subtle 3D effect when the cube rotates along different axes. Everything inside this container, especially our scene div, will respond to this perspective and appear truly three-dimensional. Below the viewer, we have our dock controls. This is the row of labels, or buttons, that allow users to switch between cube views. We use Flexbox to center them horizontally and add space between each button with a consistent gap. Each label is styled to look like a soft, glowing capsule. We use subtle transparency and blur to create that glassmorphic, frosted glass look. And we round the corners to make them feel modern and clickable. When a user hovers over a label, we slightly lift it upward and add a soft box shadow using our primary color, which is white. This hover effect gives the interface a premium, interactive feel. It's subtle, but it really makes the UI feel alive. And finally, we hide all the radio inputs. We don't want them visible on the page. They're just functional elements used in the background. The labels act as visual triggers. And in the next steps, we'll use the check selector to change the cube's rotation based on which radio input is selected. Let's move on to the core of our 3D setup, the scene and cube face elements. We start with scene. This is the element we'll rotate based on which side of the cube is selected. We set its width and height to form a square and center it using margin and position relative. But the real magic happens with one key property, transform style preserve 3D. This is what allows all the cube faces inside to maintain their position in 3D space. Without this, all the cube sides would flatten into a single plane. So this property is essential. It tells the browser, in let the children remain 3D when this element transforms. We also add a smooth transition to the transform property so the rotation between views feels fluid and animated. Now let's look inside the cube, at the cube face elements, each face is absolutely positioned so it can be placed freely in 3D space. We set them all to the same size as the scene and use a mix of transparency, blur, and soft shadows to create a frosted glass look, that glassmorphic aesthetic. We also align the text to the center and apply a small transition to add polish when hovering or changing views. Each cube face includes a heading and a small span underneath, which we've styled to look clean and balanced, using softer font weights and opacity. Now here's where it gets fun. Each face of the cube is positioned using a unique transform. The front face moves straight toward the viewer using Translate Z. The back face rotates 180 degrees along the y-axis and then moves back. The left and right sides rotate 90 degrees to either side, and the top and bottom rotate along the x-axis to cover the vertical dimensions. Together, these six transforms form a perfect 3D cube, each face facing outward in the right direction. Next, we use our radio input logic to control the cube. Each check selector applies a different rotation to the entire dot scene element. So when the front radio is checked, the cube faces forward. When back is selected, the cube rotates 180 degrees on the y-axis, left and right rotate accordingly, and top and bottom shift using x-axis rotations. We also scale the cube slightly when changing views to add a touch of depth and motion. All of this with no JavaScript. Finally, we have the dot indicators. These are the clickable dots below the cube, positioned in the center and spaced evenly. Each dot is styled as a small glowing circle. When hovered, they scale up and glow with a soft white light. These are purely visual, but they connect to our same radio inputs using the four attribute, so they control the cube in the exact same way as the buttons above. This adds a beautiful, intuitive way for users to explore the 3D viewer. Now let's take a look at how we style the interface based on which radio input is selected. Each of these selectors uses the checked state to apply specific styles to either the control buttons or the dot indicators. For example, when the front radio is selected, we target the corresponding label inside dot controls and change its background to a bright white, while the text switches to a solid black for strong contrast. This visually highlights which view is currently active we also disable pointer events to prevent clicking the same button again. We repeat the same logic for the dot indicators. When a specific view is selected, the corresponding dot becomes larger. Its background changes to white, and a soft glow appears around it using a subtle box shadow. This creates an elegant visual cue 
making it easy to see which face of the cube is currently being viewed. Now let's quickly talk about the tilde symbol in CSS. That's the tilde combinator. This selector is used to target sibling elements that come after a specific element in the HTML. In our project, we're using it like this. When a radio input is checked, we use tilde to target other elements that appear after it, like the scene, the dot controls, or the dot indicators. This lets us style those elements based on the selected input, even though they're not inside it. So with font checked tilde dot scene, we're saying, so if the input with ID front is checked, apply styles to the scene element that follows. It's a powerful way to link elements together using just HTML and CSS. And it's the secret behind this project working without any JavaScript. Next, we bring the cube to life using animation. We define a keyframe animation called autorotate. It begins with the cube facing forward. By halfway, it has completed a full 360 degree rotation along the Y axis and added a vertical tilt using Rotate X. By the end, it resets back to the starting position. This gives the cube a slow cinematic rotation that loops continuously, showing off all the sides automatically. We apply this animation to the scene element by default. So when the page first loads, the cube gently spins on its own. But as soon as the user interacts with any view by selecting a radio input, we disable the animation completely using animation, none important. This way, the moment someone clicks or taps, they take full control of the cube and the auto rotation stops. It's a smooth transition from automatic showcase to manual interaction, and it's all done with just CSS. Finally, we have a set of responsive adjustments using a media query. On smaller screens like mobile devices, we reduce the size of the cube and its faces, shrink the font size, and slightly adjust the spacing and size of controls and dots. This ensures the entire 3D experience remains usable, clean, and visually appealing, no matter what device you're on. And that's it, developers. You've just built a fully interactive, animated 3D box with no JavaScript, no external libraries, just the power of pure HTML and CSS. We explored how to use transform style, preserve 3D, how perspective works in a real UI layout, how to rotate, objects in 3D space using just CSS transforms, and how to trigger those changes using nothing but radio inputs and selectors. We even added automatic rotation, a glowing animated background, glass morphic styling, and responsive design, all wrapped inside a clean modern interface. So if you were ever unsure about how far CSS can go, now you know it can go all the way. If you learned something new today, or if this changed the way you think about front-end development, do me a favor. Press that like button and subscribe to the channel. It keeps the motivation flowing and helps this content reach more developers like you. And just so you know, I try to provide source code for all of my videos, so do check out the code pen link in the description. You can explore the code, remix it, and even build your own versions from it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.